Hello, this is Dr. Hena Asil, and this is about calculations involving more. Now, another thing that you will be required to calculate is percent purity. And you have to keep in mind that the percent purity is the mass of the pure substance over the mass of the impure times 100. Now, what does this mean? Let's take a look at this question. He's telling me an excess of hydrochloric acid was added to 1.23 grams of impure barium carbonate. Now, if he's giving me mass of impure something, that means you're not going to use that mass for anything. You're not going to use that mass to calculate number of moles. Because actually, it is not the actual mass of barium carbonate. It is the mass of barium carbonate plus impurity. So don't use the 1.23 grams when he says it is impure something. Don't use it to get number of moles. We're going to use the other information that he gives me. Okay, what is he talking about? He says the volume of carbon dioxide collected at, and this is room temperature and pressure. RTP is room temperature and pressure. Was 0.12 decimeter cube. So he's giving me the volume of carbon dioxide. And he's saying calculate the percent purity. From the volume of the carbon dioxide, I will get number of moles. So if he gives me volume of a gas, how do we get number of moles? Number of moles is volume over 24. And then I look at the equation and I find that the equation says one mole of CO2 is equal to one mole of barium carbonate. The number of moles are the same. So the number of moles of barium carbonate is the same as that of carbon dioxide. So that comes out to be the same number. Then we use the number of moles of barium carbonate to get mass. How do I get mass? Mass is number of moles times MR. So this 0 0.98 5 is the actual mass of barium carbonate that we have. But if he wants the percent purity, we said that is the mass of the pure, 0 0.985, over the mass of the impure, 1.23 times 100. And that means that my barium carbonate sample was only 80.1% pure. To calculate percent yield, you should know that percent yield is actual yield over theoretical yield times 100. What does that mean? Let's try a question. He's telling me 4.8 grams of hydrogen reacted with nitrogen to give 12.8 grams of ammonia. Calculate the percent yield. Now, percent yield, that means I'm not going to use the 12.8 now for anything. He is telling me information about 4.8 grams of hydrogen. I will use that to get number of moles of hydrogen. So that is mass over molecular mass. Remember, we're talking about hydrogen that is H2. I'm reminding you that to get the molecular mass of something, you do not include the balancing. So when we say MR of hydrogen, it's H2. H2 has an MR of 2. You don't use that 3 in the balancing for anything to get number of moles now. So he's saying number of moles of hydrogen, mass over molecular mass, 4.8 over the 2, that is 2.4 moles. And then I look at the equation and decide what would be the number of moles of ammonia. Well, the equation says 3 moles of hydrogen give 2 moles of ammonia. So the number of moles of ammonia is the 2.4 times 2 over 3. That gives me number of moles of ammonia. Now, I need to calculate what is the theoretical mass of ammonia. So, from your calculation, you get that you're supposed to get 27.2 grams of ammonia. But what did he actually get? He got 12.8. And that means his percent yield is what he got, 12.8, over what he should get. He should get 27.2 times 100. That gives you your percent yield. So let's take a look at this question. He's saying hydrobromic acid reacts with magnesium carbonate to form a solution containing magnesium bromide. Crystals of hydrated magnesium bromide can be obtained from this solution. 
And the question is, an excess of hydrobromic acid is reacted with 0.125 mole of magnesium carbonate. So he already gives me the number of moles. I don't need to sit down and calculate number of moles of magnesium carbonate. Now show by calculation that the maximum theoretical mass of hydrated can be that can be made is 36.5. Yani he's saying calculate the mass that you should get. Okay. So he says I have 0.125 mole of magnesium carbonate. So I look at that equation on top to get the number of moles of the hydrated magnesium bromide. That would be the uh, same as the number of moles of magnesium carbonate. Looking at the equation on top, you can see that number of moles of magnesium carbonate is the same as magnesium bromide. Then he says the mass should be what? The mass is the number of moles times MR. So the 0.125 times the MR of the hydrated magnesium bromide, which he gives me there. So this is the mass. Then he says in an experiment using 0.125 mole of magnesium carbonate, so that is the same number of moles from that first question, with an excess of hydrobromic acid, the mass of hydrate magnesium uh, bromide obtained is 26.4. We just calculated that he was supposed to get 36.5 grams. But actually, when we do any experiment in the lab, what we get is usually less than the theoretical yield or what we should get. So in this experiment, we should get 36.5 grams. But when he did it, the mass obtained is 26.4. So just two reasons why the actual mass obtained is less than the theoretical mass. We said always when we do an experiment in the lab, so if I'm trying to prepare these crystals in the lab, I'm supposed to get 36.5, but I will always get less. So here, for example, he got only 26. Now, why do you think? We get less than what we should get. Probably what we start with is some of it did not react. So some magnesium carbonate did not react. Or that the magnesium carbonate we started with was impure. These are two of the reasons why what we actually get in the lab is usually less than what we should get. Okay, this question says copper carbonate is broken down by heating to form copper oxide and carbon dioxide. And he gives me the equation. And he says 31 grams of copper carbonate are heated until all the contents of the test tube have turned from green to black. Of course, you should know that copper carbonate is green, copper oxide is black. And he says the yield of copper oxide is 17.5. That means that when he did the experiment in the lab what he got was 17.5 grams and he's asking me what is the percentage yield in order to get the percentage yield i have to calculate how much he should have got so what is the theoretical mass that he should have got okay he gives me information about 31 grams of copper carbonate i get the number of moles of copper carbonate Copper, a number of moles is mass over molecular mass. This is the molecular mass of copper carbonate. So the number of moles comes out to be 0 0.25 mole. And then we want to know copper oxide. We look at the equation and we find from the equation, the number of moles of copper carbonate is the same as number of moles of copper oxide. So the 0.25 mole is number of moles of copper oxide. And from that, I can get mass. Mass is number of moles times MR and we calculate that we are supposed to get 20 grams. Now, what did he actually get? He got 17.5. Remember, the word yield means the mass that was obtained. So that means we said, how do we get percent yield? It is what he actually got 17.5 over the theoretical that we calculated. So over what he should get, which is 20 times 100, that gives me a percent. Okay, so from these choices, my answer is D. Another kind of question. He has equations of strontium chloride uh, made from strontium carbonate. 
and he says in the above experiment, 50 centimeter cubed of hydrochloric acid of concentration 2 mole per decimeter cubed was used. 6.4 grams of strontium chloride was made. So this is the, what he actually got. Calculate the percentage yield. Again, he started with 50 centimeter cubed of HCl concentration 2 mole per decimeter cubed. So I can use that to get number of moles. Number of moles is concentration times volume. Again, don't forget to divide the volume by 1,000. So that gives me the number of moles of HCl is 0 0.1 mole. Then he's asking about strontium chloride. I look at the equation on top. What is the relationship between number of moles of HCl and number of moles of strontium chloride? The equation says 2 of HCl gives 1 of strontium chloride and that means number of moles of strontium chloride is half of what we have for HCl. Now then he says mass of one mole again I'm going to remind you that mass of one mole is the same as molecular mass so he already calculated masses of strontium plus chlorine plus hydrogen and so on to get 267 grams so you don't need to sit down and calculate molecular mass and he's asking for theoretical yield. Again, I'm going to remind you the word yield means mass. So he's asking for the mass. I already have number of moles. So the mass is number of moles times the MR that he already gives me. So that means I'm supposed to get 13.35 grams. But what did he actually get? If you look on top, he got only 6.4 grams. So his percent yield is the 6.4 over what we calculated, which is the theoretical yield, times 100. And that gives me the percent yield. Okay. Limiting reactants. We use limiting reactants when he gives me information about both reactants. So if he's giving me information, for example, I have nitrogen plus hydrogen to give ammonia. In all the previous questions, we had information about only one of the reactants, and we use that to get anything he's asking about. But here, if he gives me information about both reactants, I have to decide which one is excess and which one is limiting. So the limiting reactant is the one that is not excess. So if he gives me information, 50 grams of nitrogen and 40 grams of hydrogen, I calculate number of moles of nitrogen, mass over molecular mass, and number of moles of hydrogen, mass over molecular mass, and I get the number of moles of each. Then I look at the equation and decide which one is excess and which one is limiting. So looking at the equation, we can see that one mole of nitrogen needs to react with three moles of hydrogen. And that means that the number of moles of hydrogen should be three times that of nitrogen. So how much nitrogen do we have? We have 1.79 mole, let's say around two moles. What would be the number of moles of hydrogen? It should be six moles or less than six moles. How much did he actually put? He actually put 20 moles. That is way too much, more than needed. So we say that the hydrogen is excess it is more than needed we need only about six moles and he put 20 so the hydrogen is excess and that means the nitrogen is limited and when he asks about anything else we use the information about nitrogen not the information about hydrogen so i'm not going to use the number of moles of hydrogen for any further calculation i look at the number of moles of nitrogen so he wants ammonia Ammonia is twice that of nitrogen. Can you see that from the equation? One mole of nitrogen would give two moles of ammonia. So the number of moles of ammonia is twice what we have for nitrogen. And that means I can get the mass of ammonia, number of moles times MR. Another Example, here he says 0 0.096 grams of magnesium was added to 25 centimeter cubed of 0.4 mole per decimeter cubed hydrochloric acid. Again, here he's giving me information about both the act. 
So I need first to decide which one is excess. So number of moles of magnesium, what do we have? 0 0.096, so I'm going to say mass over molecular mass. That gives me a certain number of moles of magnesium. Now, we want number of moles of HCl. What do we have? Concentration times volume. That gives me number of moles of HCl. And then I look at the equation. In order to determine which one is excess, I look at the equation. The equation says that the number of moles of hydrochloric acid should be twice magnesium. So if I have 0 0.004 mole of magnesium, how much of HCl do I need? I need twice of that. That's 0 0.008. That is less than what he put. He put more than what we need, so the HCl is excess. Are we following all of this? Okay. Again, calculate the mass of carbon dioxide given off when 20 grams of calcium carbonate react with 40 centimeter cubed of hydrochloric acid of concentration this. So he's given me information about the calcium carbonate and the information about the hydrochloric acid, and he wants mass of carbon dioxide. So I need first to decide which one is excess. So number of moles of calcium carbonate is the mass over the molecular mass. What about the HCl? What does he tell me about the HCl? Number of moles is the concentration, which is 2 mole per decimeter cube, times the volume divided by 1,000, of course, so I get number of moles of HCl. Then I look at the equation. What does the equation tell me? It says that if the number of moles of calcium carbonate is 1, the number of moles of HCl should be 2. That means number of moles of HCl should be twice calcium carbonate. Okay, so number of moles of calcium carbonate is 0.2. Twice of that is 0.4, but I have much less added of the HCl, so my HCl is limiting, or my calcium carbonate is the excess, because if I have 0 0.08 of HCl, I will need only half of that from calcium carbonate, so I need 0 0.04 mole, he put 0 0.2, that's way too much, so my calcium carbonate is excess, or my HCl is limiting, now he's asking about what, mass of carbon dioxide, well, I'm going to relate it to the HCl. So looking at the equation, the number of moles of carbon dioxide should be half of the HCl. So that is 0.04. And from that, I can get the mass number of moles times MR. Another type of question, he says 20 centimeter cubed of sulfuric acid uh, with this concentration was added to 40 centimeter cubed of sodium hydroxide with this concentration. So how many moles of sulfuric acid were added? Again, concentration times volume. How many moles of sodium hydroxide were added? Concentration times volume. And then I look at the equation. Well, the sulfuric acid should be half of the sodium hydroxide. Is the sulfuric acid half of the sodium hydroxide? The sodium hydroxide is 8 times 10 to the minus 3, so half of it should be 4 times 10 to the minus 3. So obviously the acid is excess. I need only 0 0.004 mole, which is less than the 6 times 10 to the minus 3 that he added. Then he has a question. So we've decided that it is the acid that is excess in the solution. Then he's saying, is the pH of the final mixture less than 7? equal to 7 or more than 7? How do we know? Well, we just said that the acid is excess. That means I have a lot of sulfuric acid in the solution. What is the pH of acid? Less than 7. And that's the end of this part. Uh, I hope this has clarified a lot about this chapter. Uh, please practice all these questions again. And uh, thank you for listening.